You know, uh, I, I think of Rabbi Silverman as uh, a rock. And a rock has sharp edges, and it has very crisp lines, and it's, you know, like a, I think of a piece of rock that's fallen off a cliff. And then I think of a stone that's been smoothed by, by the, uh, the streams. And Gloria was the stream that smoothed the, uh, the edges off Rabbi Silverman. I, I, I understand uh, more now than I did then uh, why some people found him, him difficult. And, um, you know, you, you, you look at things and no one sees the same thing exactly the same way, you know. And the old story, you can't step in the same river twice. So people would look at Rabbi and see him differently, but Gloria made the difference in, uh, in him whenever she could. Um, and we saw him at, at his table with her and with his children and grandchildren. And it was a different man. He was, he was um, a kind, er, loving guy. He would kibitz, he would tell jokes, he would, he would smile. And you didn't see that from him on the bima. There was a kiddish club at Beth Jacob when I first joined. And uh, um, we, let's see, who was there? Alan Silver, uh, Cecil Feldman, uh, Nini, uh, Nini Cohen, uh, the Candyman, Nini Cohen, and uh, a few other guys, I, I can't remember them all. Uh, um, Victor Abraham, uh, I'm trying to think of who else, sometimes Philip Price. And just before the end of the service, after the sermon, uh, during the repetition of the, the Musaf um, a few people would sneak out and uh, there was a bottle kept in the auditorium and a few cups and we'd all go down and have a quick l'chaim and then back upstairs for the end, to end of the service. It used to make Rabbi Silverman crazy. You can't wait 10 minutes, it's not nice, it's disrespectful, blah, 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 blah. And we all still did it. Make and, an and attempt to say something about the families, to say something about the children, whether or not he knew them, whether or not he was close to them, and it was always something positive to make them feel part of it and to make them, uh, to make it a happy day. Um, when he got up to talk at the end of our first son Aaron's bar mitzvah, he, he also talked quite a bit about our family, the fact that we lived on the street, the fact that, that we were close to them, we had been for dinner, etc., etc. And the very last thing that he said, and he, he had that famous finger, and he said, Marvin, you drive me crazy, but I love you. And my husband was in tears because he did not show his affection very often. Uh, the women used to get together and bake for the kiddishes. And uh, the one thing that I remember was Hannah Feldman. She used to make this wonderful rugala. And she had, we all got together and she showed us how she made her rugala. And I do have put away somewhere the rugala recipe because it was really distinctive. But it just, it did give a camaraderie. I got involved in the sisterhood at that point and we used to have the meetings. We set up a big table in the lobby. This is sort of beyond the kitchen, but some people have a memory of my bringing Noah when he was first born to the meetings and he slept in the middle of the table while we had our meetings. So that, that goes back quite a while ago. And when we did our bar mitzvahs for the kids, there was no question that we would do all the preparation in the kitchen and that Gloria was going to help and do everything for us. And we did that for four bar mitzvahs and Gloria was, was instrumental, standing there for hours and helping us do everything. She just, there was no, you know, you were part of the shul, we're all going to do it together, this is going to be congregational, and we did. We did, we did large bar mitzvahs, we had a lot of invited guests, but we always invited the, the entire congregation. Are you telling me in those days the bar mitzvahs weren't catered, that you, people did their own cooking? You could. There was no rule then. Um, there was, there were caterers. And we had initially gotten a price from a caterer, and uh, with the number of people we had to invite, it was kind of beyond us what we were going to do. And Gloria sat down with me and she said, don't worry, we will do this. And you did not need a caterer. You had to have everything checked that you brought in. There was no question. And um, Kenta Berkovicki was, was the mishkiach, I think, and Rabbi looked at stuff as well. And I really knew the kitchen as well, and I knew not to mix things up and, and to bring in the right products. But yes, you could do it. There was, yeah, and it was fun. It was, and it made it, 
um, a whole community thing to do your, your function. And people would come in and help you set the tables. So everything was done by the people around you. And we were allowed to work up until 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, 1, 2 o'clock, depending on the time of the year. We had to be out of the kitchen. So we followed the rules carefully, but it was, it was a sense of relief and satisfaction when we finished it. It was wonderful. Um, Gloria knew how to do the most incredible party sandwiches, so there was no question that she would help and she would do the party sandwiches. So we would stand for hours. She, nobody made party sandwiches like her. She had it down to an art. And we would start on the, I think even on the Wednesday night through the Thursday, and then everything would be ready to be cut for, we had people come in the kitchen. We, we did hire people to serve because we couldn't do the serving on Shabbos. So people would come in and do the cutting and put everything out. But it was really a community thing as opposed to just being a catered function. And my kids were part of it as well. They were in there helping and doing stuff as well. Second to none, they respected her. They loved her. They were a little bit of afraid of her. Um, but she had a way of bringing out the best in everybody. And um, when there were problems, she just seemed to know how to work with them. She was the ultimate educator. She, she did a marvelous job on, the, on setting up the, sh the, the school. We weren't here initially at the beginning when the school started, so I don't know what happened with that. And my kids weren't part of the school um, for most of the time because they were at the academy, but Rabbi Silverman had a rule that you had to be in the school and studying for at least the year before your bar mitzvah. And she, she made sure that that happened. And she, as she, when there were any issues, um, one, of my, one of my kids was considering going to yeshiva after grade um, eight, and she felt that he should be going somewhere else. And uh, at the end of the summer, he called me and said, because he was at Camp, Camp Ramah with her, I'm going to chat. And I said, fine. So he went on to chat for the, he just went for the one year, but it was a really good decision. And she was part of that. Um, I did two or three different classes with her. The one that stood out with me, oh yeah, I did a group bat mitzvah. Um, and she encouraged that, Kendra Berkovic was our teacher. Um, but she was very much in favor of the women actually getting up there if you've never had a bat mitzvah. And there were six of us that got up there and did it. Um, I'm trying to remember everybody was in it. One was Sheila Friedman, who is gone, unfortunately. Um, but it, it was quite the experience, and I think it was more her getting it started, even though she wasn't the actual teacher of it. So what did you do, like a joint chanting of the Havara? Yep, yep. We couldn't do more at that point because the shul wasn't egalitarian. So we jointly did, did the, um, the chanting, and we actually all went in and prepared the, the lunch, again working in the kitchen, and got everything ready for a big kiddish lunch. Um, when anybody was, particularly with anybody was new in, in the community, she would make the effort of having them over to be part of their family, um, to be part of the family of Beth Jacob, because the Silvermans were Beth Jacob. And um, we, when we got invited on a Friday night, um, it was a real honor. We were all really pleased to go. And uh, the kids used to get all dressed up and get all excited about it, because we were going to be at Rabbi's for dinner. And she made it very warm, very, open uh, very open. Um, whether or not you were observant, whether or not you knew, you knew exactly what was going on, there was no question that you were part of it and that she never, ever made anybody uncomfortable. I mean, she had her tough parts. Gloria, Gloria could be tough, but she was very warm and welcoming and uh, she was the strength behind with, with, and she was the warmth. And I'm sure Marvin mentioned it as well. Um, we loved going there and we loved being part of the family and we were we were there for a service with the family just before he passed away they had their own service in the house and the whole family was there and uh, it was beautiful he, he spoke about each of his children spoke about why he named them um, and everybody knew that it wasn't going to be long for him but we were we were so um, um, overjoyed to be included in it, even though it was a very sad moment. And it was all sort of going on from the Shabbos dinners, being feel like we were a part of the family. It was lovely.